Welcome everyone, it's Jen from Sunday Baubles. Today we are going to be talking about garnets, specifically antique bohemian garnets. Now garnets have been prized for centuries for being beautiful gemstones, and they've also been recognized as having some healing properties. Let's get started by looking at why they're called garnets. It is widely believed that the word garnet stems from granatum or granatus, meaning pomegranate because it is very close in color to the pomegranate seeds, beautiful deep red. Fun fact, in the medieval times, it was believed that if you smeared your body with oil and were wearing a genuine garnet, you would not attract flies and wasps. The history of garnets being set in jewelry goes back hundreds, if not thousands of years. They've been set in gold and silver and mixed metals. The first piece that we're going to look at is this Tudor ring from my collection. This is one of the older rings in my collection. It is a Tudor period silver ring with a garnet set in between two birds. Initially there was some thought that these could be serpents, but clearly they do have beaks to them in some sort of stippled feather design. It is set in silver and the garnet is held by a rubbed over collet setting. Now, as we begin to look at some garnets, it's important to note that not every red garnet is a bohemian garnet. First, we need to look at what types of garnets are out there. Today, we're going to speak about three specific kinds of garnet. Pyrope, or our beloved bohemian garnet, is dark red to reddish orange with bright fire. Rhodolite is purplish red to reddish purple, and almondine is darker, sometimes has a brown red hue with a little bit of violet and a little bit of orange tint. Garnets are found in all colors except for blue in nature, so it's really quite fascinating to dig in and take a look at the different types. Now, when it comes to bohemian garnet jewelry, this is a very specific look that people are thinking about, and typically bohemian garnet jewelry is a piece that is encrusted with beautiful pyrope garnets all throughout. Let's take a look at an example. This is an example of a Georgian eternity band. It has double rows of rose-cut collet set garnets. It is in a low carat gold and they are closed-backed. This is a beautiful example of pyrope garnets in a ring and hard to find now. Here is another example, this one early Victorian, of rose-cut garnets in a ring. These are again pyrope garnets and you can really see the distinctive fire. Take a look at the fantastic collet setting that is holding all of these stones in place. The underside shows you more detail in the construction and it is all closed back and yet they light up with the light just hitting them from the surface. To contrast from the Bohemian pyrope garnet, we're now going to take a look at this sentimental brooch in more detail. This is a beautiful Victorian sentimental brooch, and it has three drops of coral and is studded with cabochon of garnet. Now look closely at the color of these cabochon. Do they look red or orange to you? No, these are in fact rhodolite garnets. Unlike the pyrope garnets, they are more a purple in color. They are no less beautiful, but this piece, a wonderful Victorian piece with a gold setting and a hair compartment to the back, was most certainly not created in Bohemia. Now, to contrast from that brooch, let's take a look at the cabochon stones in this one. Here we have another example of a Victorian brooch. This one is the popular trefoil motif. If you look into the cabochon, you will see the telltale color of a pyrope garnet. And if you look into that central rose-cut garnet, you will notice that it is particularly evident. Now, typically bohemian jewelry is a piece that is encrusted in smaller rose-cut garments to really show off that garnet fire. However, you sometimes find these pieces that also have the larger rose-cut central stones. We've seen that in the ring example previously shown, and now let's take a look at this bracelet in detail. This bracelet is truly fabulous. Every garnet is rose cut and displays the pyrope's colors to its full potential. It's rare to find antique bohemian garnet jewelry with such large stones. This one is very early Victorian, and if we take a look at the construction, it is exactly what you would expect to find. Close back setting and that tongue and groove clasp as well. This example is set in low carat gold and is truly a hard to find piece. 
1892, there was an article that was published in the Journal of the Society of the Arts, and it stated that over 3,000 workers were working in Bohemia to cut garnets, and in total, over 10,000 people were employed in making beautiful Bohemian garnet jewelry. Let's take a look at some of the more common examples that were created in time, and this is right around when mass production became more predominant. This bohemian garnet brooch is typical of later construction. Compare the collets to the ring and bracelets that we looked at. As industrialization and mass production changed the jewelry industry, bohemian garnet jewelry was made using patterns. These earrings are classic examples of the mass-produced bohemian jewelry of the late Victorian period. Now, what is it that makes bohemian garnet so special? Well, it's a combination of these pyrope garnets that have been mined in Bohemia that really have the mineral deposits in them to create that beautiful fire. And these contrast very differently from later examples. Garnet jewelry has continued to be popular. And in the Art Deco period, we see a lot of kind of reproduction jewelry because there was a Victorian revival at that point in time. You can tell the difference though between those pieces because they don't have that same fire that shines through. Let's take a look at an example of an Art Deco bracelet that was part of my collection sold earlier this year. This is an Art Deco garnet bracelet. The garnets are set in open settings and allow the light to pass through, and they do reflect light beautifully. But these almondine garnets are more brown in color than the typical red-orange that you would expect to find in a pie rope. It is also not typical to find bohemian jewelry that is set in silver. So this is how we know that it is a later piece and not, in fact, a piece of bohemian jewelry. The origin of a gemstone really is determined by where it has come from in the earth. It is the special mineral deposits that are found there that give it its distinct coloring. Bohemian garnets are pyrope garnets that have been mined in Bohemia, and unless they've been tested to truly have come from Bohemia, it is more reasonable to call them pyrope garnets if you're doing a visual identification. Similarly with a ruby, you wouldn't call just any ruby a Burmese ruby. Without doing tests and knowing for sure where it came from, it would be unfair to call it a Burmese ruby. Now that you've kind of trained your eye, let's take a look at the examples again and see if you can spot that special fire that is a pyrope garnet. Garnet jewelry has been popular for centuries, and it is likely to continue to remain so. That means that it is getting harder to find, and of course, with that, there are reproductions that are being made, and over time they are often passed off as the genuine article. In a future video, I will talk with you more about construction and how to date pieces so that you really know what it is that you're looking at. In the meantime, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them into the comments, and have a fantastic day. I'll see you again soon.